Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's from Colorado Tribe in New It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know what time you got, but welcome to the show. This is Coffee Time again. I am Dale, your host. And today, exposing the truth. And today, we're exposing the truth with Brother Gregory. He is going to be talking to us about himself and his, and his mission. He's a very devout spiritual, very devout Christian. And loves to spread the word of God, and I do too. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So interested, lean back, grab your coffee, enjoy the show. I want to introduce Brother Gregory Williams to you. Okay, uh, well, glad to be on your show. And uh, you wanted a little bit of history. Uh, you know, I'm three quarters of a century old and we're... Uh, been studying the Bible for a long, long time. Studied at, at, back in the 60s at uh, uh, a college out in California and the seminary studying uh, to be a priest. And uh, over the long history, eventually I came out to the desert and was uh, raising sheep and cattle and uh, thought I was missing something in all my biblical studies and study of Greek and Latin and languages. And so suddenly I was inspired to go back and take another look. And I started writing books on the subject because when I was in the seminary, I was asking lots of questions and the answers were not satisfactory. Met a lot of good people there, but they weren't telling the whole story. And I think if we knew the whole story, and of course that's just what prophesied in the Bible, that people would be brought under a strong delusion, that they would be deceived, that some people would think that they were following Christ and they weren't. Uh, out of Christ's own mouth, he's saying this, that many would uh, follow thinking they're following him, but not. And so I think that God has shared that with me and I have immediately shared it with everybody else and all my books are free online. Uh, I've got hundreds of audios, uh, probably a thousand articles on the topic of the scriptures and what they've meant. I think they mean the same thing over and over again. But we were warned that we would start to miss something, that we would be deceived. And a lot of people have theories about that, but we have probably 10,000 footnotes in our books. <laughs> so to, to show you that uh, we've done our homework. And we can talk on all kinds of different subjects. We uh, probably will. Okay. <laughs> As time goes on, I'm gonna. You most, you know, you didn't have a list of questions that you'd like to answer. Uh, well, uh, all the books that we've written, all the articles are usually the result of somebody asking a question, and so that we have okay. a network that we put together at preparing you based on geography so people can join, you know, if they're in Texas or in their different states, they can join that mm -hmm. network, ask questions there. There are people who have already studied a lot of the material. There's a huge volume of material. Yeah. And, and uh, many of those questions are already answered. But I think Christ, what Christ was really preaching, the details of what the early church was doing, if our modern church was doing that, we wouldn't be seeing the loss of liberty in America and the world. We wouldn't be seeing, I mean, there'll always be corrupt people around and corrupt influences, yeah. but they would have less of a hold on our society and we would be much more prepared for whatever new world order is out there gunning for our liberties. And uh, the more you understand the depth of Christ's gospel, the better off you are. And I, I don't think that the learning of that has any end to it. It's an infinite kingdom. So we're constantly should be looking and learning more about what Christ in the early church was doing. So where can you get the book? Uh, if you go to hisholychurch.org, there's a, a website. Uh, there's a search engine up in the right-hand corner on the page. It says hisholychurch.org, all one word and search the title of the books or search the word books. The first one's Covenants of the Gods and it talks about the contractual nature of government. And that's really where my first writing started. And 
because I had the religious background, the Greek background, the background in languages and history, uh, and my father was an attorney who wrote law books, wanted me to become an attorney, but I never mm -hmm. did. Uh, I had this blend of history, law, and the Bible. I mean, the Bible mentions law and government 700, 800 times. Mm -hmm. uh, it mentions religion five times. Now, what religion should be, it mentions a lot, but the word religion only shows up five times. Four of those times, it's in a, used in a bad sense, talking about bad religion. Yeah. One, one time, it's talking about pure religion. And pure religion was how you take care of the needy of society. And I think that's where one of the big conflicts comes from. And we don't just depend upon the Bible to show this. We can, you know, if somebody doesn't have a biblical background, we can show them in, in history. We can show them in American history what was making America great in the early days. Almost mm -hmm. all public schools were built by private donations, not by tax yes. dollars. The more you relied on tax dollars, the more you opened the door to federal government influence. And the federal government, we were warned. But I recently, uh, we have articles up on Patrick Henry and Jefferson yeah. and all these different people. And Patrick Henry warned that the Constitution was written as if good men will take office. When bad men take office, they will steal your rights through ambuscade. And it says the treason will be brought in by the president. And I'm not sure that we're not seeing that unfold right now. So Patrick Henry not wasn't your common lawyer. He was more a prophet than yeah. a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Uh, I'm a history buff. Right. The original concept of coffee time again was history and uh, the past repeating itself. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the original right. I got side to, I, I go up on tangents once in a while just to take a break. <laughs> you feel <laughs> history background. Yeah, that's what well, be our history, history background, history. You're, you're absolutely right. If you want to know the future, study the past. That's something right. I always say. Exactly. Because we're, we're, whatever we did wrong before, we're going to do it again, especially if we don't know our own history. That's and one of the don't. reasons why your public schools haven't been teaching history for decades. And no. then the history they have now started teaching isn't the true history. No, and not only that, but there are school districts on the East Coast and down into the Southern, which studying American history, they do teach it, but it starts in 1860. <laughs> a little late. <laughs> yeah, well, wait a minute, what happened to George and, George and, and Jefferson, Jefferson and the rest of them? Guys. Yeah, uh, even, you know, when I was going to school, the history books that I was looking at were very old. I, I only went to private schools. Mm -hmm. I never went to public school. And, uh, but I, I tell you where I really started learning history is when we home taught all our children. I have six children, mm -hmm. about 15 grandchildren and some great grandchildren. Yeah. And, uh, but we home taught our kids and my uh, oldest son, when he was about eight years old, he was reading about George Washington in one of these little kid books, yeah. you know, and I said, so who is George Washington? He said, well, he had wooden teeth and he, you know, he chopped down a cherry tree and, you know, but it's an eight year old. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I said, but that doesn't tell you who he was. And so I, I started looking it up and I found out that he was a prolific writer, had a diary. Mm -hmm that is volumes of information. Yeah. And I started reading them and I discovered I didn't really know who, what history was. I didn't really know who the guy was. And same with Jefferson, what the details of their life will give you a perspective that the modern yeah. history books don't even get close to. And I've we did- I've we, done several podcasts on them. We've done, uh, uh, we have a schools as tools. We, that was an early article. Of course, we're homeschooling our children. You know, I've my, that same son is in his fifties now. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a long time. He knows a lot about George Washington now, <laughs> but, but, uh, 
the, the, their perspective is so much wider and deeper than the average person they talk to. All my kids have ended up being leaders in their fields, uh, leaders sure. in the places where they live. Uh, and we, uh, it, it's because they think outside the box and we try to give them enough tools to think with. People say, school is not supposed to tell you what to think, but how to think. Well, you know, if you want to go target practicing, yeah, it's important to learn how to shoot. And yes. it's important to learn what to shoot at. But right. if you don't have any ammunition, you're not going to hit the target. Yeah. And so what schools should be doing or what you should be doing with your young children is giving them the facts and information. And part of that is history. Yes. And I I remember when the school down here, the local, uh, you know, we were very rural. I mean, it's 40 mm -hmm. miles to the nearest school. And... Uh, 75 miles to really the nearest town and uh, but I was doing some work for a guy who worked at the school and he was tickled pink that they weren't going to teach the kids history anymore he said why do they need to know what the Romans did <laughs> and I thought like are you missing it I mean I just couldn't even believe these things were coming out of his mouth the history teacher at the school for high school students was to name all the college football teams. That was their weekend assignment. And oh he thought that was way more important than knowing what the Romans did. So what the Romans did is happening to us today. Yes. Follow the Roman, if you're studying to follow the Roman Empire and the correlation between the corruption, the bread and circuses and all that happening today. Yes. It was history repeating itself. And the, the free bread and circuses. Uh, the, yes. And we, we go into great detail, even though we're mostly centered around the Bible. Mm -hmm. I'm telling people that you can't really understand uh, a lot of the statements in the Bible unless you understand the history in which they were spoken. Right. I, uh, I forgot what I was going to say, which is not unusual because I'm three quarters of a century old too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm a year short. I'm a year short, I'm 74. But uh, I have a favorite saying about history, that the culture that forgets its history has no future. Yes, absolutely. Uh, because you don't, you don't have any perspective. I recently wrote an article on uh, Edmund Burke and we did a show on him too. So I put up the recording on the same page. The, all of our articles, all of their articles in the last 10, 15 years have been put up at preparingyou.com. That's another one of our websites. Okay, preparing uh, you. And, and you can go there and look for the books, but if you want to actually download the PDFs, you have to go to His Holy Church because the PDFs yeah. aren't on Preparing You. We link back to His Holy Church. But, uh, but a lot of the books are, are written and compartmentalize the second book was thy kingdom comes and we try to put what it meant i mean this christ came preaching a kingdom which is a mm -hmm. government and it was if you begin to read the the wycliffe bible one of the earlier translations in the forward uh, or the introduction to the wycliffe bible he says this is the book for the government of the people for the people and by the people that's where Lincoln got that statement that he put mm -hmm. later on, years later, in his uh, Gettysburg Address. Right. But, I didn't know that. Yeah, most people don't. But the, the Bible is about good governments and bad governments. And mm -hmm. it's trying to show you the difference between the two. Christ that was, was the second. Christ was a capitalist. Uh, yes, he, was. uh, he wasn't yes, in yes, favor yes. of democracy. He was in favor of a republic. And the government that he created with the apostles, I appoint unto you a kingdom, he says, was actually what you would call a pure republic. You know, yes. and... I uh, I have a, an issue with the Bible. I believe in it. I read it. I study it a little. Uh, however... There's been so many, it was translated from the Greek, 
to Latin and English, and and need to translations errors slips in, mistakes, right? And mistranslations well, slips in. I I I. Because I have a knowledge of Greek, I've gone back, I'm, and there's not one Greek text. There's lots of different Greek texts, mm-hmm. and there none of them are original. We just don't have original copies. Right. But uh, it, it also is written in Hebrew and in uh, oh, Hebrew, Bastida, yeah. Hebrew, and it was translated into Latin. And it's interesting who did it and why. And we go into all these in the many different articles. Jerome was one of the first ones to translate it into Latin. And yeah. before that, the Old Testament had been translated as the Septuagint. Well, generally speaking, almost 90% of the time, we're quoting the King James Bible. Not because right. it's 100% accurate or anything, because it can't be. Because the definitions of words, I mean, like we mentioned religion already. Today, yeah. if you Google the word religion, they're going to tell you that it means what somebody thinks about a supreme being. Yeah. That, that's what they say religion is. At the time that the American Constitution was written, religion was defined in your, like, Bovier's, which is the dictionary of the time that was being used, also similar in Webster's, mm-hmm. that it was the pious performance of your duty to God and your fellow man. That's what religion was. Yeah. It was a performance of a duty. Now you say duty to God. Well, God doesn't need our help, but God wants us to love our neighbor as ourself. So our duty to our fellow man is to love our neighbor. And the same word that we would translate into love in the Bible, in the Greek, is the same word that they translate into charity. If Paul says it, they translate it charity most of the time. If Jesus says it, they translate it love. Pure religion was how you took care of the needy of your society. And they state in James that you do it unspotted by the world. Well, there's five different Greek words they translate into the single English word world in the Bible, in the New Testament. Well, the one they use there means, you can read it right in the concordance. I don't make these definitions up. I just look them up. Lay them out in the footnotes so you can find out what what they really meant in the text. I don't want to retranslate it, but I want you to understand the metaphors and the words. But the word world there means constitutional order and system of government. Mm-hmm. Christians would not go get the free bread of Rome. That was of the tables Paul says we should not eat. Right. And uh, we should not touch. And so they wouldn't do that. They wouldn't sign up for the welfare system of Rome. They had their own. And we see Paul moving food around and supplies around to the Christian community during dearths, which are like depression, shortages of food, uh, breakdown in the economy. Well, we're about to head into a breakdown of the economy. We definitely see, I work on... uh, I, when I came out here, I was tending sheep, as I said. Well, we still have some mm-hmm. sheep. We still have some cows. And we, yeah. we graze them on the church property. But but uh, I was actually pulling a calf today. A, ca- a cow got stuck down in a hole, and I had to go over there and pull it out wow. of the hole and pull the calf out. It's doing fine. I'll put pictures up on Facebook this afternoon. <laughs> but uh, I... I still have my grubbies on. I didn't even get to yeah. change before the show. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. sure uh, my people have to see me as I really am. <laughs> but I agree. taking you care agree. of the needy of society was what the church did. And the last one, and that's what they did in early America. Like yes. I say, most public schools were built by volunteerism and free will offerings, not by tax dollars. Because it wasn't the government's job to educate us. We would educate it. I got a great article up about Davy Crockett. And it, it quotes people of that time telling Davy Crockett, who allocated some funds in Washington, D.C. because there was a fire and a bunch of houses got burned down. And, they, and Congress met and said, well, we're going to help them out with a little bit of aid, a little relief. And the people back home said, we're not going to vote for you ever again, Davy Crockett, because you did this. 
because yeah. that's not the job of government. The job of government is, you know, defense from foreign invasion. So right now, we got the government supposedly helping out the poor, but they're actually, <laughs> if, if you're on Social Security, a common amount that you might receive is $1,400 a month. Mm -hmm. If you come across the border illegally and enter the country against the, the statutes of the United States government, right. they will give you $2,200 a month. Yeah. On an EBT card. As a matter yeah. of fact, when you come across the border, there are piles of ID and passports. They just yeah. throw away. They come in with an app on their phone. They show that they can fly anywhere in the United States with an app. They filled out on their phone themselves with their own testimony, no birth certificate, no ID whatsoever, and they will be given a, a, a card by the federal government, they, they can spend up to $2,200 a month, plus they get free transportation vouchers. They get... Yeah, I know. I, I did a... Uh, this is an invasion of America. And, yeah, I did two podcasts on the border with a Border Patrol agent. Right. A supervisor. Heartbreak on, heartbreak on the Border is the name of them. Okay. That's one and two. They're incredible. Yeah. What he found and the numbers he's given me. Yeah, my, my son's gone down there and, and interviewed them himself. And I've got yeah. another son who's uh, uh, the county commissioner in our county, one of the larger counties in the state of Oregon. And, Are you in uh, Oregon? Yeah, we're, we're in our Oregon right now. And okay. uh, been here for 45, 47 years. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the, and... You know, like I say, all my kids are involved in, uh, yeah, I say kids, they're all grown adults. They have children of their own, but uh, they have a different perspective and they're well-respected in their different fields. Uh, and they're getting out the message of what's going on. I mean, back at the beginning of COVID, uh, mm -hmm. you can go all the way back in, uh, we show the progression of how we began to slip away from those fundamental practices that early Americans did that the modern Americans don't have any knowledge of whatsoever. And I am simply, I am shocked by when I talk to, start talking to somebody about 19, even as early as 1918 or 1913, they know nothing. Right. Let alone if I'm talking about the ancient Greeks who were talking about climate change 2,000 years before Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, that was actually one of the things we, we brought that up just because it's a matter of history that, yeah. uh, I mean, Cicero is telling, and, and Tacitus is also writing about the fact that beech trees are growing higher up on the mountain because the climate has gotten so much warmer. Yeah. And shortly before that, you know, 120 years before that, the, the Gauls and Celts were coming down and invading near Rome because the winters were so cold that they didn't have, they couldn't grow their crops. And so they were, they were coming south. And all the things that America used to do, you know, like we used to have seven years supply of grain mm -hmm. on the wheat farms. I've done that too, worked on the wheat farms in North Dakota. Seven years supply on the farms in you know all over from Kansas to North Dakota to Washington in silos and yeah. the government ended that and of the course. people have now destroyed those silos now worldwide we only have about 30 days supply of grain we are on the verge of the greatest famine in the history of the world I've been hearing rumors about that for a while and uh as the Bible says, and I believe it's Revelation, it's pestilence. Oh, yes. Rumors, wars, wars, and pestilence. Yeah, and some of that pestilence is probably created by the very governments that people have created for themselves. Because oh, we don't know the basic principles of a true republic and how no. it operates. And so this is why we tell everybody that they need to get back to homeschooling, home health, uh, community-supported agriculture, Mm -hmm. uh, and there's so many details you can't I, like I, I've got thousands of audios out there if you want if people want to listen to our audios they would 
they could go on almost any podcast here and look for Keys of the Kingdom with Brother Gregory. You have to add the Brother Gregory part because a lot of people use Keys of the Kingdom. And we just, we have two to five hours a week that we make every week. And we cover a wide range of topics because we're tying the Bible into current events. You know, the reason they were having famines, dearths, as it says in the, in the uh, Greek text or in the the English translations of King James, they use the word dearth. The reason they were having them is because Rome had gone socialist, mm -hmm. and I mean, we're farther along than Rome was when it fell. At the time when Jesus held up a golden denarii, yeah. or maybe it was a silver denarii, what that he held up, but either way. That's what they had, gold and silver denarii. That was what right. their money was. Well, right. by the time Rome completely fell, it, it took six denarii to buy what they call a modius of wheat, which would be about 30 pounds of wheat, you know, a bag mm -hmm. of 30 pounds of wheat. Six denarii at the time of Christ. By Diocletian, yeah. it cost 120,000 denarii to buy the same bag of wheat. Oh, man. Let's talk, let's talk about inflation. But... The reason why is Nero started taking the sil silver out of the silver coin. Uh, even before that, uh, Mark Anthony and Cleopatra reduced the silver in a silver denarii by 10%. Mm -hmm. uh, Nero reduced it at one point down to about 40%. By oh, Diocletian, there was no silver in the coin whatsoever. We've we already done no, that. We have what's called fiat money. Yeah. Backed by the government, not backed by gold. Well, it's actually backed by the labor of you and your children and grandchildren because they've made you a surety for debt when they introduced United States citizenship. And we go through that. In, in the Covenants yeah. of God, is 15 chapters. We go yeah. through, each chapter is covering a different way in which they're bringing you out of what we used to call the common law or natural law. Where mm -hmm. that's where your rights are. Your inalienable rights are natural rights, God-given rights. Right. And you're, you've moved steadily over the last 100 years into a legal system. And that legal system, uh, it, it's you don't have... I just heard somebody on the news, a news anchor, uh, saying that these these crazy conservative Christians think that their rights come from God. They don't realize their rights come from the government. <laughs> and you go like, you know. God-given rights. Yeah, that, I mean, that, she hadn't even read that Constitution or the Declaration of Independence or anything. Yeah, you got to read the darn thing to understand it. <laughs> but she was a young woman, and she was an anchor. And, well, you you're, you know, what Jefferson said, you know, 200 years ago, if, if you read... If you don't read the paper, you're uninformed. If you do read the newspaper, you're misinformed. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you're even more right today than he was back then. Yeah, I don't know how but many times. You know this. I don't know if you know this or not, but all the media outlets are owned by six corporations. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every one of them is owned by six. Only six. Yeah. So we're not getting anything new to news. I don't give a darn which check channel you're watching or which broadcast you're watching we're not getting the real news yeah if you if you watch us you will get it <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk talk all the time about what's in the news although we do i have an afternoon show i do more of that in but even when yeah, i do the I morning don't... shows that are biblical based you know we're going through mm -hmm. we went through exodus we go through the prophets we go through we're mm -hmm. going through john right now and I'm tying the information that Jesus, when Jesus in John 7 and 8 are basically State of the Union addresses. He's telling you how the government works. But people yeah. put it into what they think is a religious context. And they, because of the metaphors, that I mean, like when he says, call no man on earth father. Most people today, they, they struggle with it. I haven't heard a single minister explain what that was. But in the Greek text, you see the Latin word, patri. 
which means father. Mm -hmm. Why is he writing? Why are they writing pottery there? Now you can write pottery in the Greek because the Greeks were stealing stuff from everywhere, and the yeah. Romans were stealing. You know, they were borrowing words everywhere, like Shakespeare and stuff. But the reality is, as at that time, the emperor of Rome was called Patronus, which means our father. The senators of Rome were called conscripti patri, conscripted fathers. The state was taking the place of the natural father. If you, if you fell on hard times, you didn't go back to your father's house and say, I need help. Or you go back to your uncles and the, your relatives. Yeah. You go to the government. If you want to get married, you don't go to your father like S Samson did and ask permission to get married. You go to the government to ask permission to get married. And they'll only give you permission on their terms. And we give you the whole yeah. history of that. Yeah, good, good. I'm glad to see somebody's doing a lot of good history after that. <laughs> really gladdens my heart. Because I go through this, I go through and I do my research on various topics, whatever uh, history comes up, like the one I did on uh, climate change. Greeks are <laughs> talking about it, like you said. And uh, I talk to people about the income tax. They have no idea. They thought we've always had income tax. <laughs> <laughs> in 1913. Right. Well, actually, even in 1913, 1916, uh, 1913 is mostly the Federal Reserve. 1916, they had a corporate excise tax, which was an income tax. But even yeah. that income tax was only a tax on fiduciaries of corporations. Corporations are creations of the state. Corporations right. should be taxed by the state because they're entities of the state. Uh, yeah. But you're not an entity. You're not born an entity of the state. I'm not born an entity of the state. I'm not born an entity of my parents. <laughs> no. But income tax on wages and salaries of the average individual came in in 1933 with the Social Security Act. When you know, I have to disagree because Woodrow Wilson put in a uh, income tax. At 7%, only affecting the rich in 1913 when he was elected president. Uh, who was it? You, you, Woodrow Wilson? Woodrow Wilson. Wilson. Right. He's also the one that did the Federal Reserve Bank, too. Right. And he's also the one at the end of his deal said that he had ushered in treason. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there was an income tax. But who was having to pay that income tax? Even under FDR, you had to make $10,000 before, in a yeah. given year, before you owed any income tax. Right. At that time, $10,000 would have bought you three completely Recording furnished homes. $10,000 at that time is like making a okay, million dollars today. Yeah. yeah, we just lost the recording again, so what time is it here? About it. Give me a second. I, I hate to do this to you. I... That's okay. I, I'm actually recording it here. I record all my conversations just so Good, I have a record. You are, but maybe you can send me a copy to. Uh, <laughs> we might be able to do that. We we just set up you know what, software. You know what is? Say again. We transfer. It's a website where you can transfer a large large volume of, of data. Uh, probably. Uh, my technical advisor sitting over there, but I'm sure we yeah. can do it. Uh, Just, yeah, I can even I, put it up on YouTube, and you can download it right up on from our YouTube channel. Yeah, I can get it from there, from your YouTube channel, which is? Uh, His Holy Church. Okay, got it. And so that's that's our basic YouTube channels. We have a lot of people that are, are ministers, and they, they put up a lot of our material in other places, but those mm -hmm. are... We've got quite a few websites that we're managing, but I don't do it all. I, other no, people I do it. I'm trying to do all this myself, this podcast. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a an armful. It is. It really is. I'm sorry about this, but I got another one coming up in a couple of days. I got to get it fixed, so I get it taken care of later today. Get rid of some, put some more stuff on my, I got a two gig, two terabyte hard drive. Uh-huh. External. Right. So I just put a bunch of stuff over there. I just put a bunch more over there. Go straighten it out later. Anyway, 
Have you ever heard of N.T. Wright? Yes. 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 Yeah, you I've quoted of... him several times. Yes. In he's, some he's of my writings. My, uh, you ever heard of a, a, a Sony, mission, Sony Seminary in Tennessee? It's uh, University of the South School of Theology. Uh, no, I have uh, not that I can they say. Have, uh, have, yes, that's right. They have a program called EFM, Education for Ministries. Right, I've heard of that. Yeah, that's the four year. I've taken that course, uh -huh. the four year course, and it's incredible because you start with the New Testament, the Old Testament, the New Testament, first year, second year, third year is uh, church history, which was just an incredible, incredible program year that year. That, that fourth, third year was great. And the last one is theology. Okay. So you get the, but it's not for ministers, it's for ministries. Right. Yeah, I, I was taking theology back in 1962 at the college yeah. that I was attending. But I actually was one of the youngest and smallest persons in the college because I was only like 13, 14 years old when I started. I was going to say, you weren't much older than me because I was 62, I was 12. <laughs> So, yeah, the, and, you know, everybody starts in a different place. Everybody's journey takes them in a different place, but mm -hmm. we should be coming together. I'm not a big denomina denominational type person. I, I, yeah. I think that there's one denominator in the church, and that's Christ. We don't try to get people to belong to his holy church. We want you to belong to Christ. We don't mm -hmm. tell people you can't go to your whatever church you're used to. Yeah. And people, if the Holy Spirit is leading you to go into this church, Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, whatever, go. Like, you may be right. the only one bringing the Holy Spirit into that church. You may have a message right. they need to hear. I, uh, we have a our priest at the church that I go to, which is here in Colorado, but uh, it's just incredible about preaching the gospel. We, we, we get, she gives us stories from the Gospels. Right. In her in her sermons. And in, when we talk, she always has something to go with. Yeah, my, when I go through, like uh, like I said, we're going to do uh, John 10. Uh, yeah. This, this weekend, that just happens to be where we're at now. We've been just yeah. going through John steadily. And we've done Matthew already, and we've done a lot of others, but... Uh, I, you know, it takes me two hours to get to one uh, chapter usually. Yeah. Because I, I tell you the meaning of those words, not only in the modern concordances, but at that time. How the people were hearing what Jesus was saying and what, it, like the Son of God. And John yeah. 10, he refer, you're, you're angry with me because I say I'm the Son of God. Well, why would they be angry? They, they, most people don't know this, but Caesar Augustus and Tiberius and all these Caesars held an office called the Son of God. And that office was in charge of the social welfare system of Rome. Mm -hmm. That if every year a Roman citizen would go and buy incense at their temple burn it, of course they're overpaying for the incense, it was a donation, yeah. saying that Caesar is the son of God. And along comes Jesus, no. and people are saying, no, I'm not going to go to the temple of Rome. I'm no. going to I'm gonna go to, well, basically his holy church. I mean, the church established yeah. by Christ, the ecclesia of Christ. If mm -hmm. I have a need, I'm going to tell them. And I'm going to sacrifice daily to take care of the needy of our Christian society. There was no right. central treasury with the early church. Christ was against that. There was mm -hmm. a central treasury with the Pharisees and Herod. And as a matter of fact, uh, when they talk about treasury, there's two words they use and call treasury in the New Testament. Uh, one is gastrophone, which is the royal treasury. But mm -hmm. the treasury for your social welfare was called Corbin. 
and they don't the, the Jesus mentions the Corbin of the Pharisees makes the word of God to none effect mm -hmm. and he says that it causes young men to do no more ought for their parents well we give you the history of that system of Corbin set up by Herod at the encouragement of the Pharisees which was a social security system where you signed up and you had to pay in a portion of what you produced mm -hmm. and then the government through the temples and through the synagogues synagogues were ten families would take care of the needy of society but this was forced offerings compelled offerings only when you signed up but once you signed up you had to pay into that system yeah and John the Baptist comes along and it says until John the Baptist everybody was trying to establish the kingdom of heaven the utopia on yeah. earth that this kingdom of righteousness through force John the Baptist said no you had to do it through charity and in America we used to do we used to take care of all our old people in America there was there was almost nobody starving in the streets uh, you know when you go back to the pilgrims or Jamestown people starved every year in those places mm -hmm. until they said we're gonna do capitalism what you produce is yours and after you produce it you get to decide how you want to share it with your fellow man ended starvation amongst the pilgrims yeah. we we quote the actual diaries of the pilgrims saying I that this it. is it we quote uh, john uh was it john smith uh who w w was uh the head of jamestown uh, later on yeah and he he they were arguing that they had to have this common purse where all the food goes into a storage and then we take from that as we need from each according to his ability to each according to his according need to his and he yeah. said he, he listened to their arguments and he pulled open the Bible and he says if you don't work you don't eat and he closed it and he said no what you produce is yours you decide how to share it right because you're you'll make much wiser decisions if you don't do it that way you'll weaken the poor the black community has suffered immensely because LBJ targeted them for his great society his yes, welfare society and, he, yes, and of he course did. he's he's harming uh, a lot of other people today for the same reason I can take you to uh, Greek historians uh, to Roman historians who said you know the greatest destroyers of liberty are the givers of gifts gratuities and benefits but I can also take you to Proverbs it says that if you sit and eat with a ruler and you be a man of appetite put a knife to your throat for he serves you deceitful meats his dainties are deceitful meats and Proverbs also says oh well uh, Psalms David says what should have been for your welfare which is those gifts gratuities and benefits from rulers is a snare and a trap and not only do we quote these things we write articles showing you in the law in the legal system in natural law from from hundreds of years before Christ hundreds of years after Christ and in our own time so we're always bringing the Bible into the context of today and the wonderful mm -hmm. thing about that is if we repent think differently that's what repentance is it's not about being sorry yeah. you might be sorry too but repentance as a Greek word means to think differently you begin to think we got to take care of one another we have to stop looking to the government to solve all our problems we need to stop looking for the government for a while I am a strong believer in getting rid of about all but about four or five government departments uh, well I'm I'm with you <laughs> <laughs> starting with education oh yeah there should be no federal education personally no. at this stage in the game and there's some good news on this subject in the last two years most states who keep records uh, doubled the amount of homeschoolers good and, and uh, not only that we, we encourage we we're organizing people like the early church it's free assemblies we're not like again I don't have a membership role of everybody in our network mm -hmm. but it's a, a free assemblies and we're showing people Christ commanded that his disciples his 
training ministers, make the people sit down in tens, hundreds, and thousands. That's when there was 5,000 men in their families. This mm -hmm. is the way the early church was organized. That 10 heads of households, families, elders, that, that's another yeah. thing. The word elder uh, has always meant, only in recent times did they start turning it into some sort of church office. It meant the head of a family. The eldest mm -hmm. man in the family was right. the elder of that family. And he would get together with nine other guys like himself. They would pick a minister. And that minister, he might be a spiritual guide of some sort, but every one of us are a spiritual guide. Every one of us should be tapping yes. into the Holy Spirit. Each one of us should be ministering one to another. But they would pick a guy, and this is ancient. This I, I could show you this yeah. way back in time, the tens, hundreds, and thousands, the way the Celts were all organized. It's the way a lot of Americans were organizing at the time of the American Revolution. They yes. weren't running out I to am. tell everybody that the British were coming. They were going out to tell the tens, hundreds, and thousands. It was a network of people, and we need to go back to that. And we can. We don't have to wait for somebody to win the election. We need to start no. doing it. We do, and I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, we agree. It is uh, so important that we start doing this. There are so many things that we, as, as for lack of a better word, Christians, what we need, we have authority from Jesus to do a lot of healing, to be a disciple. Absolutely. We have authority to do healing and a lot of other things that we can do as followers of Jesus that the church don't want you to know you can do. We are allowed to give last rites. Well, the, the fact is, is this is what Christ was doing. He's, he's, when he Actually, in John 10, again, he says, uh, is it not you, they're condemning him because he says he's the son of God. And he says, isn't it not written that ye also are gods? No, it doesn't mean that you are a god over me, a ruling no. judge over me. It means no. that you are the judge, you and the Holy Spirit, hopefully, are the judge as to what you should do, right? what you should give, what when you should give, when you should not give. Somebody was asking me the other day, well, shouldn't, shouldn't I just give to these people over here? And I says, well, are you making them stronger or weaker? You know, the, the government just gives to everybody who says they're poor. And now everybody who says they're an illegal immigrant, they get, <laughs> they're giving to them. You know, I've been thinking about becoming an changing my last name and becoming an immigrant. I make more money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, I can tell you lots of stories on that topic, but we don't yeah, want to get too far from uh, what we're talking about. But yeah, what we try to do, and there's a great deal, and we put it both in audios and we put it in, you know, all of our Bible studies. They'll have a side panel over there that has dozens anywhere, but, you know, every chapter probably has anywhere between 20 and 40 footnotes where we're showing you what the words mean. And then we're connecting with other articles so you know when Jesus says, call no man on earth father, what's he talking about? He's saying, stop looking to Caesar and the Senate of Rome for your benefits because the the free bread, you mentioned it at the beginning of the show, their free bread and circuses are the deceitful meats that Paul, that Peter later on says will make you merchandise. Peter says, to covetousness, you will be made merchandise. What is covetousness? It's desiring what belongs to your neighbor. Right. And when you desire benefits from a government that doesn't reach into its pocket, it reaches into your neighbor's pocket and it gives you, it takes away from your neighbor and gives to you. You have yeah. agreed now that it's okay to take from my neighbor to get what I want. Well, if that's what you judge is true and righteous, then it's okay your neighbor takes away from you to get what he wants. Right. And, and that makes us perfect savages. We're yeah. using the teeth of the government to take a bite out of one another. And we've been doing it for 50, 60 years, more and more as 
things that progress. Goes on, yeah, that's right. And so now we've been devoured and we're saying we want our rights back. You want your rights back, you have to take your responsibilities back. And what your religious responsibilities is start taking care of one another. Now, I, I mentioned on the last guest show I was on that if uh, I had a heroin addict here and he wanted help, I might give him help, but he's got to get off the heroin. Yeah. He's got to show me that he wants to change. He wants to, out here, we work. There's calluses on that. Almost all of our ministers have calluses on their hands. A few of them do a lot more paperwork, but uh, they are self-supporting. Yes. And but wow. what they are doing is not, they're not sitting up at the front of a big church full of pews trying to tell you what to think. They're connecting you to one to another so that mm -hmm. you can minister one to another. Each of us are supposed to be ministering one to another. But yes, if you're going yes. to do that effectively, when you've got millions of people or, or 10,000 people or 100,000 people, you have to network. Because I can't know everybody. For some reason, God's got me starting this network. I can't remember people's names. I really have a hard time doing it. I have to write it out because I don't think in, in words like other people do. Yeah, and, I, I have great problems. I, I've never been able to do that. But if we do the tens, hundreds, and thousands, I don't have to remember everybody's name. I just have to remember maybe 10, 20 people. And I tell you, in the days ahead, during the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, you know, like Ed, Edward Gibbons wrote a, a great five-volume set on the, on the subject, mm -hmm. uh, the Christians had this network. They didn't wait for FEMA. We have a thing... Yeah, you go look up FEMA at preparingyou.com, one of our websites, and we actually have a page called FEMA, except for our page stands for Faith Emergency Ministry Auxiliary. <laughs> it, <doesn't, laughs> it does not stand for Federal Emergency, uh, whatever agency. Federal Administration. We, just, we, we have to start taking back, and the way to do that, you know, you gather in those tents, you network together, and that's that's what we're setting up through preparing you. And, and I'm not setting up. Some people have said, well, I, I signed up, but nobody got a hold of me. No, you get a hold of us. You, yeah. Once you're signed up and you can get the emails, uh, then you can email that small group and say, you know, that group might be 50, 80 people, 100 people. If, if the group gets much bigger than that, we break it off and make s smaller groups. But those are just email groups. Now, I can send to all those groups in a matter of seconds. Yeah. But we we have people that grow wheat in the network. We have wh people who grow cattle and sheep in the network. We have people with all kinds of skills, health skills in the network. But we have to create those lines of communications that's so that when thing things is. go down, we can still find one another and help one another. And that's what the early church was doing. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I uh, was going to say earlier and forgot, the decline actually started under Woodrow Wilson. He was our first progressive president. And, and that's when the decline started. It was in 1913 when they elected him president, which is one of the biggest mistakes this country's ever made. Right. Uh, and, you know, that's interesting how he got elected president yeah, was right. T Teddy Roosevelt created the Bull Moose Party right. and split the vote. That's right. Otherwise, he would have never got in. No, Teddy Roosevelt would have been. Yeah. And, but the, the fact is, is that Teddy Roosevelt's own party didn't support him. No. Nope, so he had to create another party and he split the vote. Uh, we've seen this happen before. Uh, yeah, and the reality is, I don't know what's going to happen if we even going to have an election this year. I but, don't know. Uh, the fact is, is I don't care who gets elected. I, I mean, I do care. But if we don't change down here where the people reside, if we right. don't start thinking differently and change our strategies away from thinking that we just got. I mean, look, go back to the Bible. Samuel, Samuel 8 where the people said, we want a king. They could have said, we want a president. Yeah. We, we want an executive power who can 
solve our the corruption in our midst. There was a way to do that then without having a king, but they decided they wanted to have a king. And yep. Samuel tells them very clearly, okay, well, he goes to God and God says, tell them what kind of government this will end up in. And he did. And he did. He says the government's going to take and take and take and take. He's going to take your sons and run before his chariot, put them in harm's way. He's going to take your daughters to be his confectionaries. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I can show you what that means in our own history, you know, yeah. uh, with the women's lib movement and, oh. and getting everybody employed. Uh, and so now people think they have to have, my wife has worked for the family. She's a worker too. Uh, she's worked for the family. Of course, mm -hmm. we have a farm and uh, raise livestock so uh my biggest problem with her is i trying to stop her from overdoing it. <laughs> of course she'll, she'll tell you the same thing with me but uh yeah. you know we're we're both up there in age and we're we're still working more than yeah you know, when i turned 70 i told her i says well i guess now i can outwork two 35 year olds because i'm <laughs> 70 <laughs> and sure enough i did it <laughs> Or I hate retirement. Mostly, I hate retirement. Yeah. Well, people ask me when I'm going to retire. And I said, well, I was tired yesterday, and I'm going to be retired today. Yeah. So, it it keeps, keeps us going. And yeah. uh, like I said, you know, I was pulling a calf today. That was a hard calf because, well, the cow, like I said, was down. We had to get the cow out of the hole. And, yeah. And me and another 60-some-year-old guy were doing it. And uh, had to hook a truck onto the cow to pull it around, got up. Then w we had to grab the feet of the calf that was inside of her. And we were both holding on to it, and the cow's walking away. And we pulled yeah. that calf out. It's doing fine, like I said. But yeah, So that's real that. work. That's not yeah. sitting around just pushing a pencil. But I'll be up at 5. I was up at 4 this morning writing what we're going to talk about and John 10. And I tell you that if people started listening to our, you know, Exodus, uh, our, our, our programs on Matthew, they're all up there at preparing you. Uh, you will get a wider and more in-depth view of what the gospel was really about and how it relates to the problems we see coming down today. Rome yeah. was the new world order of its time. Not originally. Originally, Rome was a republic. But mm -hmm, it degenerated into a, a socialist, autocratic state. And there were people yeah. 150 years before it did that that were warning that if it continued, if the people continued with an appetite for benefits and the habit of receiving them by the rule of force and violence, in other words, through taxation, Mm -hmm. that they would degenerate and yeah. uh, and find once more a monarch and a king. And that's exactly what happened in Rome. Well, and it's we what was happening in Judea. Yeah, we were warned about, about our government from Washington and Jefferson and all of them told us how bad of a deal we could put ourselves into yeah. if we were careful with our republic, including Benjamin Franklin. Yeah, well, I we just told you at the beginning, to hold on to it. Patrick Henry was saying the same thing. He, Yep. He was uh, uh, he was against the Constitution, yeah. and and later on Washington actually said things. But we we miss uh, we have a book contracts, covenants, and constitutions again free mm -hmm. online uh, at His Holy Church. Each chapter is dealt with, and we have audios with it to help you lead through it. Uh, so we're not in the book selling business. You can order the books from us, but we'd prefer you just to download it and read it yourself <laughs> because it's a lot less trouble for me. <laughs> did uh, did I lose your sound just then? No, I have three websites. Did you lose me? Uh, just briefly. I saw your lips moving. Oh. And I didn't hear anything, but okay. it yeah. Said, yeah, there was an interruption in the internet. I got three websites to check out on you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and it's time for us to go, I'm afraid. Okay. Okay, it was great and meeting you. Go to, I'll go to YouTube here shortly, probably tomorrow. I'm not going to have time today. But, uh, and uh, download this so I can get it published. Nice talking with you.
Nice talking to you. I really enjoyed this. This is great. Okay. All right. Well, have a good one, John. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, too.